Good morning, church. And a very special welcome to the family of Jonah Catandella this morning on the day of his baptism. Praise God. A message for our children has been recorded and is posted online. And you can find that on our YouTube channel or on our website. It is such a pleasure to have Helen back at the organ bench this morning. <laughs> and I understand that we have a couple of birthdays in the room. We have Ken Williams, who's turning 94 this, this week, he just told me. <laughs> and also, we have Helen, who's also celebrating a birthday this week. So I wonder if we could just take a moment and sing happy birthday to both Ken and Helen. Would you do that with me? Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Helen and Ken. Happy birthday to you. Amen. <laughs> and happy birthday to anyone else who might be celebrating with us this week. We celebrate you and rejoice that God has given uh, the world uh, your presence in it. A couple of announcements as we go forward this morning. Next week, we will be at the beach at Scudder Park on Sunday, May 22nd at 10 a.m. Rather than being here, please go down and join us down at Scudder. Our regular worship will be held there, and you're encouraged to remain and have a picnic with us. There's a pavilion with benches accessible by a paved walkway so that everyone might join us. We ask for you to stick around and have some fun with us, and so we'll invite you to bring whatever games or activities you'd like to share, and I'll bring some as well providing sandwiches for lunch, and there will be a donation jar there for anyone able to make a contribution at the beach that morning. I hope you'll plan to join us at the beach and spend some time together with your church friends as we simply enjoy God's good creation and one another's company. Yesterday, about 10, uh, 10, uh, about 10 of us, excuse me, from St. Paul's, went to the Long Island East District's mission walk and picnic to raise funds for UMCOR's Ukraine relief efforts. We were literally between the raindrops yesterday, but it worked. There's still time to make a donation through the link on your screen or by writing a check to the church with Mission Walk on the memo line. We hope that you'll help us reach our goal of $1,000 to help the people of Ukraine. As always, 100% of your gift to UMCOR goes to those in need of help the most. Sisters and brothers, Christ, let us go in Christ, let us go now go to the Lord and enter to God's holy presence with awe and thanksgiving. Wherever you are right now, you are in God's house and all are welcome in this place. Praise God.
Amen. Please join us in the call to worship this morning. We come today from different places, different moods, different mornings. Some are hectic and rushed, others quiet, perhaps forlorn. Regardless, we are loved equally in God's eyes. We pray for health or happiness. Some pray for strength or support. We pray in joy and hope and longing, and God hears each prayer the same. We worship with different voices and talents, and we lift up our hearts united in praise. Each one of us is unique and beloved. Together we praise the God who welcomes our worship as one. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Please rise and join with us as we sing Spirit of the Living God. You'll find it in your red hymnals in front of you in page 393 or worship with us on screen. Please join me in the opening prayer. Gracious and loving God, we are grateful that you have called us together this day, drawing us from darkness to the glory of your light. May our spirits rejoice at the good news you have for us today. Open our hearts to your healing love, for we ask this in Christ's name. Amen. Today's first reading is from John chapter 13. When he was gone, Jesus said, now the Son of Man is glorified, and God is glorified in him. If God is glorified in him, God will glorify the Son in himself, and will glorify him at once. My children, I will be with you only a little longer. You will look for me, and just as I told the Jews, so I tell you now. Where I am going, you cannot come. A new command I give you, love one another. As I have loved you, so you must love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples, if you love one another.
Praise God. Before we move on, Judy, I have something important that I need to do. If you'll take a seat for a moment, I would like to call forward our confirmation class to come forward this morning and join me here on the altar. With those who are being confirmed this afternoon, please come forward. Why don't you come stand around this baptismal font for me for a minute? I think I saw Max. There he is. Stay right there. So, confirmants, today, this afternoon, you will do something amazing. Take a look for a moment before we get to that, and take a look at this little guy. This little guy is just beginning some of his spiritual journey. Jonah today will be baptized, and his parents will do what your parents did for you so many years ago. This afternoon, you will take the vows that you will hear his parents make on for yourselves. And that is the next leg of your spiritual journey. Now, we'll have a lot to do about that later, but since this is your local congregation, this is the church in which you are, were baptized in, or at least most of you, and this is the church which you're being confirmed into. So we wanted to take a moment to celebrate you here this morning. To help you on the next leg of your journey, I have for you these confirmation Bibles. Now, each one of these Bibles is already special because this, these contemporary English Bibles are written in your language, I hope. But more importantly, it's written in a language that God will use to speak to you. Open them, read them, write in them. I've already underlined a passage in here for you. Last night, I sat there at the altar, and I stood at the altar, I should say, and I prayed. And I asked God to show me a scripture for each one of you. And I've written where to find that verse in the front of your Bible. And I've highlighted it already for you in your Bible. Go and find it. But don't let that be the last scripture you ever look up in these Bibles. These student Bibles are made for you to study and learn. Let God speak to you. For each one. Max, this is your Bible. Alex, your Bible. Tyler, this is your Bible. Nash, this is your Bible. God, we ask that you would lay a hand upon each one of these scriptures and upon each one of these confirmants today. We pray, O oh God, that they would cry out to you in the depth of their soul. That they would trust in you always. And that as they move to confirm their faith this afternoon, that that would be the beginning of a spiritual journey that invites them to raise their sails and to go to distant shores they do not yet know. But to know, Lord God, that you will be with them in every wave, in every breath of air, and in every meter of the journey. Lord, thank you for watching over them thus far and for each journey that still lies ahead. Bless the journey, Lord, and use these Bibles to speak to these confirmants. In Jesus' name, amen. Church, would you celebrate these wonderful disciples of Jesus Christ? All right. The second reading today is from Acts chapter 11. The apostles and the believers throughout Judea heard that the Gentiles had received the word of God. So when Peter went up to Jerusalem, the circumcised believers criticized him and said, you went into the house of uncircumcised men and ate with them. Starting from the beginning, Peter told them the whole story. I was in the city of Joppa praying. And in a trance, I saw a vision. I saw something like a large sheet being let down from heaven by its four corners. And it came down to where I was. I looked into it, and I saw four-footed animals of the earth, wild beasts, reptiles, and birds. Then I heard a voice telling me, get up, Peter, kill, and eat. I replied, surely not, Lord. Nothing impure, unclean, has ever entered my mouth. The voice spoke from heaven a second time. 
do not call anything impure that God has made clean. This happened three times, and then it was all pulled up to heaven again. Right then, three men who had been sent to me from Caesarea stopped at the house where I was staying. The Spirit told me to have no hesitation about going with them. These six brothers also went with me, and we entered the man's house. He told us how he had seen an angel appear in his house and say, Send to Joppa for Simon, who is called Peter. He will bring you a message through which you and all your household will be saved. As I begin to speak, the Holy Spirit came on them as he had come on with us at the beginning. Then I remembered what the Lord had said. John, the bapt John baptized with water, but you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. So if God gave them the same gift he gave us who believed in Lord Jesus Christ, who was I to think that I could stand in God's way? When I heard this, they had no further objections and praised God, saying, So then, even to Gentiles, God has granted repentance that leads to life. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. <clears throat> Good morning, church. And welcome again to all of our guests this morning. It's a pleasure to have you with us. I want to start by talking a little bit about Methodism, which is the name of the type of church that we're in this morning. You see, Methodism began in school, Oxford College to be precise. In the early 1700s, a few friends, including brothers John and Charles Wesley, and a young preacher named George Whitfield, studied, gathered, and remained together at the seminary. They were determined to live a more personally holy life, and they aimed to share that life with others. So deliberate and systematic were they in their efforts to serve the Lord that their snickering peers called them Methodists. And in truly inspired form, John and Charles owned the nickname and made it the name of their movement. Throughout their lifetimes, these three preachers would share what they called scriptural holiness throughout England and America and were in many ways responsible for igniting the spiritual awakening of the 18th century here in America. Despite having left Oxford many years before, they continued to learn from each other. George Whitfield was so determined in his preaching that people needed to be born again that the Anglican Church wouldn't let him preach anymore in their churches. So Whitfield took to the open air, and he preached in the fields and anywhere else that people could gather. He became popular quickly. It was clear that he had struck a chord with people, especially those he felt had, who had felt uncomfortable inside churches they deemed too stuffy or too judgmental. Initially, John Wesley was as frustrated with Whitfield as the other Anglican priests. Proper teaching, he had always been taught, was done inside the church, not just anywhere. He and Whitfield had quite a few disagreements about this, but always seemed to have, they always seemed to have this kind of respect for one another. I wonder what they would think today as we go to the internet now to be able to proclaim the good news all over the world simultaneously with podcasts and the like. In the end, though, the Wesley brothers came around. In John's words, he decided to become more vulgar and start preaching in the fields himself. He found people excited to hear him, and this move changed the face and effectiveness of his entire ministry. I wonder, church, what would happen if Christians today decided to do the same, to let ourselves get messy in ministry and take the gospel into places that no one would expect that it could go? I've heard many great sermons that rock someone's world, but the place where the spiritual growth really happened was often in spirit-filled conversations, walking along the beach, around campfires, kneeling by somebody's hospital bed, over the thumping music of a DJ, sitting at a bar, or talking with friends in someone's college dorm room. We can study evangelism and dynamics in small groups, but the key to both is simply this, sharing our God-touched lives with one another and breathing God's spirit into one another deeply and often. It's not about technique or about having all the answers. It's not about the class you took or the degree that you have. It is about showing that you care and reminding each other that God cares. I give you a commandment, Jesus instructs us still today, 
that you love one another. Just as I have loved you, so you must love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples, if you have loved one another. John 13, 34 through 35. Sisters and brothers in Christ, do you know what happens when God shows up? Or better still, when those who follow Christ are willing to follow Christ anywhere. I want to tell you the story of Peter this morning. We know this disciple of Jesus as impetuous Peter, willing to preach the good news, who got to walk on the waves with Jesus, the one which Christ vowed to build a church upon. In the book of Acts, we find that this Peter is able to preach the good news to anybody about Jesus and to remind people that even if they manage to keep Jesus out, he won't stay down. Amen? But in Acts 10 and 11, we see just how deep Peter's new calling goes. And he has already come tremendously far in his spiritual journey. He's even the head of the church in Jerusalem. And yet Peter still has room for spiritual growth. Peter was still in Joppa, the same place where he prayed by the side of Tabitha and had seen this dead woman raised. Praying up on the roof, Peter saw a vision of great linens, a great linen sheet being lowered down from heaven. On it were a variety of animals, many of which were not considered spiritually clean by Jewish kosher law. Peter was a Jewish Christian. He had not deviated from that his entire life, even when he was walking around with Jesus. And he died a Jewish Christian as well. So for the voice from heaven that told him to eat this strange feast, Peter pulled back immediately. Absolutely not, Lord, Peter replied. Nothing impure or unclean has ever entered my mouth, he says in verse 8. But God reassures him, never consider unclean what God has made pure. See, Peter was not being told about this just to talk about what he eats. This was a metaphor for the kingdom of God and the church itself and how it would grow. Through this vision, Peter is instructed by God to go to a home of a Roman centurion named Cornelius. Despite being a Roman occupier, Cornelius had believed in the Jewish God, but as a Roman, there was only so much he could accept and he could get within the Jewish community. He and his his soldiers were, after all, the harsh occupying force of a foreign government. Imagine today if a Ukrainian citizen were invited to go to the camp of a Russian soldier to go and dine, and you can imagine how Peter might have felt about this. But to his credit, Peter was obedient to God, and was willing to risk his own spiritual purity to go where God was leading. It's Interesting, isn't it, that Peter had to risk the purity of his own soul to be obedient to the one who gave him his soul. But because he did, Peter became the first witness of the Holy Spirit's anointing on non-Jewish believers, of which that continues to all of us today. Standing before the Jerusalem council, Peter was asked why he was wasting his time among the Gentiles when Jewish people needed to hear about Jesus. The circumcised believers in Jerusalem demanded to know why Peter would sully his soul and set a bad example by sharing a table with those they weren't even sure that Jesus would have consorted with. What could Peter do but tell them the story, repeating in Acts 11 what we'd already read about in Acts chapter 10, almost verbatim in the book of Acts, Except this, Peter adds this when he stands before the council. He reflects before the Jerusalem council that if God gave them the same gift he gave us who believed in the Lord Jesus Christ, then who am I? Should I stand in God's way? To their credit, even though it broke with religious tradition and even the Jewish Torah, they too became more vulgar, like John Wesley did, and decided to go where they witnessed the Holy Spirit was leading them. When the apostles of the council saw that people's lives were actually being transformed by the Spirit of God, they stepped aside and they let it happen. Maybe some even got on board and they even may have helped it happen. But in either case, the book of Acts tells us that they praised God and concluded, so then God has enabled Gentiles to change their hearts and lives so that they might have new life. This scripture from Acts 11 leaves us with Two miracles, really. First, that God broadened the good news to be relevant to everyone. God's Spirit was available to anyone who would receive it, and that Spirit is still available to us today. Jesus had planted the seeds of that great awakening by sharing the table with those Jewish people no one would, thought would amount to much. 
And Jesus ministered to people outside the Jewish community as well. However, Peter took it to the next level. He was guided by God. He saw that his God was moving out among the Gentiles too, and Peter went where he saw God was moving. One thing, church, to welcome anyone who happens to find their way to your doorstep into the fellowship of faith. Quite another to walk up to their doorstep. It's critically important to show hospitality to those seeking Christ, but what if we didn't wait for them to come to us? What if you and I hung out with people who don't look like us or act like us, and instead of judging them, we opened our eyes for how God had already created them wonderfully, beautifully? Friends, I've seen worshiping congregations grow out of a love for whitewater rafting, the practice of yoga, and riding motorcycles. Communities of believers have started in prisons, mental health institutions, out of Alcoholics Anonymous Anonymous groups, on college campuses, and at soccer fields. I've even heard of some churches starting up out of the practice of boxing and ultimate fighting championships. Now there's an in-the-face gospel. There is no one beyond God's redemptive reach. And more often than not, I've discovered that the Holy Spirit was already working in those communities, sometimes more freely than in churches. I mean, to be fair, most of us are already in those situations all the time that churches would never endorse, right? We're already there. We don't just usually think of those places as places where God can show up. Peter was surprised where God would show up. So will we be when we look. And that brings me to the second miracle that we read about when Peter's called before the Jerusalem Council. It was great that Peter had witnessed this and begun to experience it for himself. But the second miracle is that they believed him when he said that he saw Christ's spirit live among the people that they hadn't thought worthy of the gospel. This is the challenge of the institutional church today. To accept that God can move however God wants and even to chase after the Spirit of Christ anywhere that it leads us. To do so will no doubt make us uncomfortable, but with the exception of a few of us who are Jewish, not a single one of us would be part of Christ's movement today if someone hadn't seen fit to include whomever God had chosen not to exclude. This afternoon, our confirmands will confirm their faith in Christ to save, heal, and transform in them and through them in this world. This morning, we will be witnesses in just a moment to the adoption of little, Jonah's, a little Jonah into God's whole family. And all of us will make a covenant with God to surround him with God's love all of his life. I love baptisms because God chooses us long before we ever know to choose God back. And even though we may find that we have made a mess of things from time to time, our baptisms remind us that Christ loves Regardless of how many missteps we may make, God's abounding love will always be there for us, guiding us to share that same divine grace with others. We are pulled upwards into the loving winds of the Holy Spirit, filled with grace, and called to do just as Christ taught us. Just as I have loved you, you also should love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples, if you have love for one another. Go and love one another, church, and see the Spirit of Christ growing in places you would never even expect. In Jesus' name, amen. As the Spirit of God cries out to us, Abba, Father, maybe Mom, I invite you to take this insert out of your bulletin this morning and follow along with us, or if you prefer, you can turn to page 39 in your hymnal and follow along with the baptismal liturgy together. Would Jonah and his family please come forward? Brothers and sisters in Christ, through the sacrament of baptism, we are initiated into Christ's holy church. We are incorporated into God's mighty acts of salvation and are given new birth through water and the Spirit. All of this is God's gift offered to us without price. Who presents this child for baptism? On behalf of Seth and Heather, I present Jonah Cantonell to be baptized. Praise God. Praise God. 
that case, on behalf of the whole church, I ask you, do you renounce the spiritual forces of wickedness, reject the evil powers of this world, and repent of your sin? If you do, would you say, I do? Do you accept the freedom and power that God gives you to resist evil, injustice, and oppression in whatever forms they present themselves? If you do, would you say, I do? Do you confess Jesus Christ as your Savior, put your whole trust in his grace, and promise to serve him as your Lord in union with the church which Christ has opened to people of all ages, nations, and races? If you do, would you say, I do? Where you nurture this child in Christ's holy church, that by your teaching and example he may be guided to accept God's grace for himself, to profess his faith openly, and to lead a Christian life. If you will, would you say, I will? To you, the congregation, do you, as Christ's body, the church, reaffirm both your rejection of sin and your commitment to Christ? If you do, say, we, we do. do. Will you nurture one another in the Christian faith and life and include these persons now before you in your care? With God's, God's help, help, we will proclaim the good news and, news and live according to the example of Christ. Christ. We, we will surround these persons with a community of love and forgiveness that they, they may grow in their trust of God and be, and be found, found faithful in their service to others. We will we'll pray, pray for them that they may be true disciples who walk, who walk in the, in the way, way that leads to life. To all, let us join together in professing the Christian faith as contained in the scriptures of the Old and New Testaments. Do you believe in God the Father? I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ? I believe in, in Jesus Christ, Christ his, his only, only Son, our, our Lord, who was, who was conceived, conceived by the Holy Spirit, Spirit born of the Virgin Mary, Mary suffered under Pontius Pilate, Pilate was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the, On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven, heaven is seated, seated at the right hand of the Father, and, and will come again, again to judge, judge the living and the dead. Do you believe in the Holy Spirit? I believe, I believe in, the in the Holy Spirit, Spirit the, Holy the Holy Catholic Church, Church the, the communion of saints, saints the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Seth, if you would take the water and begin to pour it. And the Lord, pour in the water, and the Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray, Eternal Father. When nothing existed but chaos, you swept across the dark waters and brought forth light. In the days of Noah, you saved those on the ark through water. After the flood, you set in the clouds a rainbow. When you saw your people as slaves in Egypt, you led them to freedom through the sea. Their children who brought them through the children you brought through the Jordan to the land which you promise. Sing to the Lord all the earth, tell of God's mercy each day. In the fullness of time you sent Jesus, nurtured in the water of a womb. He was baptized by John and anointed by your spirit. He called his disciples to share in the baptism of his death and resurrection and to make the disciples of all nations. Declare, Declare his, his work to, to the, the nations, nations his, his glory, glory among all the people. people. Pour out your Holy Spirit to bless the gift of water and those who receive it, to wash their sin, to wash away their sin and clothe them in righteousness throughout their lives, that dying and being raised with the Christ, they may share in his final victory. All, all praise, praise to you, you eternal, eternal Father. Father. Through your, your Son, Son, Jesus Christ, Christ who with you and the, the Holy Spirit, Spirit lives, lives and, and reigns, reigns forever. forever. Amen. Amen. Now, if you would be my hands and baptize Jonah today. Jonah, I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Now, if you would all lay hands.
invite the Holy Spirit to come and be with him. And church, you may raise a hand too if you'd like. Jonah, the Holy Spirit work within you, that having been born through water and the Spirit, you may live as a faithful disciple of Jesus Christ. Amen. Now if you would take the anointing oil. Draw the sign of the cross on his forehead as we seal him forever in Christ Jesus. Jonah, the child of God, you are sealed by the Holy Spirit in baptism and marked as Christ's own forever. Amen. Now it is our joy to welcome our new brother in Christ. Would you say these words with me? Through baptism, Baptism, you are incorporated by the the Holy Holy Spirit Spirit into into God's God's new new creation. creation and made to share share in Christ's Christ's royal priesthood. We are are all one in Christ Jesus. Jesus. With With joy and thanksgiving, thanksgiving, we we welcome welcome you as as members members of the family family of Christ. Christ. Amen. Now I would invite you all to turn to page 2051 in the black hymnals in front of you as we sing, I was there to hear your boarding cry. And I think if you have this insert, the lyrics are also printed there. And I would invite Jonah and his family to take a walk down the center aisle and back up and introduce our new brother in Christ to the congregation. their faith, to confirm their hope, and to perfect them in love. Together, we give thanks for all that God has already given you, and we welcome you in Christian love. As members together with you in the body of Christ, and in this congregation of the United Methodist Church, we renew our covenant faithfully to participate in the ministries of the church by our prayers, our presence, our gifts, our service, and our witness, that in everything God may be glorified through Jesus Christ. Amen. Now the God of all grace, who has called us to eternal glory in Christ, established you and strengthened you by the power of the Holy Spirit, that you may live in grace and in peace. Amen. What? Let us pray together. Loving and everlasting God, we thank you, Lord, for all that you have shared with us, for the gifts of grace and joy in days of wonder and splendor, and the gifts of your abiding presence and persistence that you would never give up on us, even in days of trial. Lord, we thank you for the testimony of what we have witnessed today, Lord, for Jonah's sacred moment, this incredible blessing in this time. And we watch this young child begin to grow in grace and wisdom and in years. And to our compromands, Lord, who very soon will confirm their faith and put their whole trust in God's grace, as many of us have done so many years before. Lord, may we too find our way to the altar in our hearts and find the assurance of our lives as we look to Christ, the pioneer and perfecter of our faith. God, in faith, it is to lift up the people that are near and dear to our hearts this morning. God, we pray for all those on our prayer list, and we offer prayers today for those who need healing, guidance, protection, and those whom we celebrate. 
In particular, God, we lift up prayers for Betty White, Kenny McCarthy, Les Brig, Gary Suttle, Colleen McGuire, Pastor Rosalind Lee, Robert Hayhurst, Helen Kegeris, Jonathan Gazzini, Michelle Sanchez, Janet Griever, Tommy Buckelman, Maureen Seiler, Noah Shear, Joan Senzel, Thomas Ratton, Judy Korsh, Todd Pierce, Ed Morgenstern, and Mike Callahan, and all those others who may need healing. Loving God, hear our prayer. God, we pray for those suffering from COVID-19 or its aftermath and for an end to this pandemic. Loving God, hear our prayer. For comfort for the family and friends of James Lyman, Anthony James Bomeni, James Hogg, Tim Lynch, Bobby Heilig, James Gadzini, Kevin Vallis, Kathy Layton, Elsa Liebold, Henry Strong, Donald Cicero, Tommy Raleigh, and all those in mourning today. Loving God, hear our prayer. God, we lift up prayers for those who need guidance, for our world, national, state, and local leaders, for Bishop Bickerton, D.S. Julia Yim, and the leaders of our beloved church, for a world set free from the bonds of prejudice and hatred. Loving God, hear our prayer. We pray for those who need protection, for all of our military personnel and first responders, especially Rob Lyman IV, for our frontline workers, for safety and peace for those fleeing Ukraine. Loving God, hear our prayer. We pray a prayer of thanksgiving for those whom we celebrate today, God, and gratitude for our families, friends, and co-laborers for the kingdom of God. And enjoy, Lord, as we celebrate the births of Ken and Helen and many others. Loving God, hear our prayer. Lord, whether we offer our prayers to you aloud or offer them to you in the whispers of our heart, Lord, we know that your response is always born of your steadfast love and that you always come when your children call and that prayer changes the world around us. So it is, Lord, with the assurance of faith that we offer the prayer that Jesus taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Now would our usher bring forward the offering that we dedicate to the glory of God this morning. Inspiring God, grant us the power of curiosity and imagination to see the world as you do, to look on our neighbors with love and acceptance, to welcome the stranger with warmth and generosity. Awaken our compassion to recognize the dignity and humanity within each one of your children, regardless of their creed or color, their wealth or environment. Strengthen us with the power of your Holy Spirit. Amen. Please remain standing as we join in singing together number 384 in your red hymnals. Love divine, all loves excel.
Now may God's grace awaken your soul and inspire you to see the world as God sees it. May the Holy Spirit open your hearts to see dignity and the needs of others. And may the love of Christ comfort and sustain you through all the days ahead. Go in peace and may the peace of Christ be with you. Amen. Please be seated for our postlude. <clears throat> 